Hey, what's going on guys, Garden Shed here, and welcome! Um, so today, I thought I'd do a one year on, 5,000k, I say 5,000k, I've done 4,965 kilometres, um, on my Panther. So I thought I'd sort of do a bit of an update as to what's going on, so what I like about it, what I don't like about it, um, and all of that. Before we get into the review, I do want to say, um, I know I haven't done many motor vlogs recently, the reason for that is, the wind noise in my helmet, I've worked out, my helmet's fully strapped up now. I think my head's actually, uh, my helmet's slightly too big. So I think that's what the wind noise is coming through. I'm going to go to um, Motorbike Shop at the weekend, get them just to check, see what they think. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed, you never know. It might actually uh, turn out to be my helmet. I really hope it does. Well, no, I don't. Um, Hopefully I can get some smaller pads put in for a smaller size. If not, then I'm back to square one. So, uh, yeah. Ideal, not ideal, but hey ho, one of those things. Anyway, the bike. So, this is a 2015 Zontos Panther. Um, as I said, I've owned it for a year. Now, the first thing you need to bear in mind, and I'm sorry I haven't had time to clean it, it's rained on every single day off I've had, so... Yeah, it's filthy. You can see where I ran my finger along it earlier. Um, the first thing you need to do, bear in mind, this bike was £1,300 on the road new. Now, you might be going, what? And it's cheap and Chinese rubbish and what have you. Um, I can say from personal experience, it's not. And I've absolutely loved this bike. So, yeah, just bear in mind the price when I talk about different things, things like that. So it's 125cc, um, top speed is 65 miles an hour, it will get there just um, on about 7.5 stone and 5 foot 6, so I'm not very heavy at all, um, and yeah, it's it struggles with me on it, let's face it, to get to 65, um, so realistically you're probably looking about 60, probably on your flat. Um, if you're uphill on dual carriageway with a head, very strong headwind, you're looking more at 55. Um, that's just sort of what I've noticed. But I have to say this bike has been brilliant. The reason I bought the bike was I wanted to learn to ride a motorbike. Yes, that's TVR in the background. Um, and yeah, I bought the bike because I wanted to learn to ride a motorbike. Never ridden one before. wanted to get a bit of experience before going to... A bigger bike so I bought this and I have to say it's been fantastic um, it's done everything I wanted it to it's lovely and stable it's very forgiving if you make a mistake it's cheap very cheap as I said about 1300 pounds on the road price when I bought mine that includes registration first year's road tax and they're very kind of even put some fuel in it for me so that's not too bad I think they're about 1400 now I think I paid 1350 or something um, I shall insert price here. So, because of the price, you don't expect premium quality. Um, I have to say, this bike has never let me down. The one thing I would advise anyone doing, buying a Zontes, if you're having problems starting it, so you turn it on, it's got manual choke. Um, I think I showed it in my first review, but I shall show it again to you. There's a little choke lever here. All the way up is to start it. Once it's running, you flick it to middle. Down is off. Um, so very, very simple. But sometimes when you start it up and you let go of the throttle after starting it, it cuts out on a cold engine, um, even with the choke on. And all you have to do is adjust the fuel switch. Sorry, the uh, little carburetor fueling thing, which is just there. Um, yeah, it's easy enough, just about a quarter of a turn should do it, and you'll find it starts up straight away. Um, other than that, I have to say, I don't think I've had any issues with it at all. And lots of people have said on forums and stuff about the kickstand cutout on these. I personally haven't had a problem with it. Um, it's simple to disconnect if you did have a problem with it, but as I said, I haven't had a single problem with it, so I don't see the point in... Uh, Disconnecting it. To be honest, it's quite useful. So, what do you get for your money? 
So obviously you get 125cc engine, nice Chinese build quality. Um, the Panther has two disc brakes, unlike the Tiger, who has a front on the, sorry, a disc on the front, drum on the back. And the Monster is basically this with a slightly different face and slightly higher seat height. I can sit on a Monster, as I said, I'm five foot six, and I can touch the ground. So this, if I hop on it quickly, I can sit on it quite comfortably. And I don't know if you can quite see my legs slightly bent. Now for me, I really like that because when I was learning, and everyone learns at some point, you may make a mistake as you pull up to a traffic junction, traffic lights or whatever, slightly off balance, and it just means you can get your foot down solidly and firmly um, if you need to. So equipment wise, you don't really get much for your money's worth at all. Let's be honest, it's a 125, it's not going to have loads of toys, stuff like that. Instruments pretty much as you are, hazard warning indicators, headlights, ignition, horn indicators. Well, one of the things I don't quite like about the bike, um, sort of sitting here doing all of this, a couple of things. One thing I, sorry, one thing I do really like about this is, for your money, you get a little gear indicator, which is fantastic if you're learning. Not quite sure. I mean, I don't really use it now. Now I've got used to the revs, the sound of the bike, and what speed I ha I'm doing. I don't look at the gear indicator whatsoever. Um, and it can sometimes be a little bit misleading. There's sort of a dead space, I've noticed, between sort of second and neutral. And you might think you're on neutral, you've got the light on and what have you. It turns out it's actually in second. Or likewise, you might think you're in second, it will suddenly drop into neutral. Um, that was part of the Chinese build quality. When I had my accident and bent the gear shifter, they replaced it, and I haven't had that issue since. Um, the gearbox at first was quite scratchy. Since they replaced the gear selector, hasn't been an issue at all. So, you know, can't really complain. The headlights, if you've seen my Cheltenham Part 2 vlog, I should put a link in the description, the headlights are absolutely abysmal. The reason for that, and not all Zontes have that problem, it's not the light, where the light shines. So lots of people said, well, you can get an LED bulb and it'll be a lot better. Yes, I'm sure it may be a little bit better, but it's not going to fix the issue. So let me just say, when you have your lights dipped, most of the light is down just beyond the front wheel, which isn't really much use because obviously if you look there, you're probably going to come off. You want the light somewhere over there. Now, full beam, you get a little bit of light going over there, but you get even more light down here. And the reason for that is the fascia of the bike. So if you look at how the light curves around it, the light points naturally, if you follow sort of the angle of it, although the bulbs like that, the lights point like that. So that's where the light goes. And because of this bit here, this solid bit, you don't get enough, enough light going forwards. You don't have this problem on the Monster because it has a different front end, but you do get it on the Panther. And yeah, it's one of those things you can't help with the Panther. Um, so if you're tall enough and you can touch the ground on a monster, I would recommend that. I wouldn't recommend the Tiger because it has not only a rear drum brake, it also has a sort of cross-ply type tyre on the back. So it's more sort of an aggressive looking tyre. It's got sort of meteor uh, tread to it, which is maybe very good. However, there's a reason they stopped putting cross plies on vehicles. And that is because when the conditions get slippery, the roads can be awful. Sorry, the traction can be awful. My brother had a Land Rover with cross plies on and it slid everywhere. As soon as it came to a corner in the wet, in the ice, whatever. But Panther, I've stopped it a few times in a hurry. As you probably have seen from my last couple of videos. And um, brakes need to be alright. So, build quality wise. As I said, mechanically... This bike has been brilliant. Um, it's never let me down. It's never failed to start since I sort of tweaked the fuel injection. It's never stranded me. It's never cut out. Um, I've never had any mechanical issues with it whatsoever. Um, the only slight m issue that may be caused by mechanics is after the low side, my front brake squeaks. But you know what? I can deal with that. That's fine, you don't really hear it once you're moving, it's just at slow speed that you hear it. Um, but the brake works 
perfectly fine, so I'm not calling that an issue. The build quality on these can be a little bit iffy. Um, the levers just need a bit of tightening, they can wear themselves loose. Granted, my clutch is further down and wiggles a lot more since they're low sided. I never got the clutch lever replaced, I didn't get the mirror replaced, I did none of the cosmetic um, replacements to it because that was just more money. I've just got the mechanical stuff done, so gear selector replaced. I think all in all it came to about 100 quid and they retuned the engine, cleared it out of any rubbish, replaced the gear selector. Um, also when they did that they noticed the carb needle, there was too small a carb needle in it, trying to build quality. Um, so they replaced the carb needle. Now, if anyone says to you, it's got the wrong carb needle in, let's put a different one in, don't let them do it. And the reason for this is, my Zontes, when I went down to Shelton, had the small carb needle in, and the fuel uh, economy was ridiculous. I think it cost me two, three pounds, something like that, to do 90 miles. Um, it wasn't very much. So if it cost me three pounds to do 90 miles, it's about 11 pounds to fill it up from the bottom. So it had a range of about 400 miles with the carb needle, the old carb needle. And with the new one, the correct one, although the fuel economy is still really good, it's nowhere near that. Um, I can safely say it doesn't last. Um, there's no sort of performance increase since they changed it. So one of those things really. Um, build quality wise, so trim, fixtures, fittings, a couple of things I don't really like about the bike. So let me hop on it quickly. Now, I have to say, while we're sort of round here, the paint, absolutely fine. It's with standard it. There's not really a scratch from where I've been riding. If I clear away the dust, um, that's all fine. The stickers haven't come off because it's stickered, not painted. The logos, things like that. A um, couple of issues I have had where it's been dodgy quality. You can see a little bug on the mirror there to stop any water going in. I lost that one. Don't know how I lost it, but as a result, Rust can build up in there, so I sprayed a bit of GTH5 in there. Um, hasn't been an issue. Round here, lost a couple of the studs. Um, and I saw one lot literally just lying on the fuel tank. It must have blush brushed it and it clipped off. Um, that is... Well, it was sort of sat on the tank. I thought, what's that? Flicked it off, rode home. Got home and thought, I know what that was. So I rode all the way back to where I flicked it off. And unfortunately at that point the car had driven over it and it was no use. So uh, yeah, a couple so a little bits of the trim, not great. The mirrors, however, uh although they offer quite good sort of uh, adjustability, they've got quite a wide range on them, the mirrors are pretty good actually. At speed, so round thirty and stuff, they're absolutely fine, clear as day, what have you. At fifty sixty they vibrate a lot, um, and you can't really see what's behind you. You can see there's a vehicle, but you can't tell if it's another bike, a van, or a car, or a truck. Especially at night. <laughs> it looks like there's a di laser disco going on in your mirrors with the vehicle's headlights. It's uh, yeah, really not great. Um, but apart from that, as I said, you get your it's been fantastic. Comfort-wise, it's unbelievable. I have a bad back. Um, I had a spinal disease about 18 months ago. Cleared up about six months before I started riding. And if I'm in a car, I have to get out and take a walk every 60, 70 miles. I get absolutely crippled. Um, even in my dad's Range Rover. And he's got a latest model Range Rover Sport, which is really comfy. No matter how I adjust the seats, I have to get up to and walk after about 80 miles. On the bike, I did Cheltenham and back, and I didn't have a single ache or pain. Actually, no, that's a lot I did. I had a sore wrist from where the um, where I broke my wrist, but that was just from doing the clutch loads. Um, and I had a short, short, sore shoulder, sorry, um, but that's lack of cartilage in my shoulder. Um, a hereditary thing or something like that. So there was nothing that the bike really caused um, comfort-wise. The seat was blissfully comfy. 
I wasn't uncomfortable, a little bit cold, because um, I came back about 6 o'clock and had none of the linings in any of my uh, jacket or trousers. I didn't have thermal gloves, so when it got down to about 4 degrees, I did start getting a bit cold. Um, but yeah, this bike has been fantastic. As a first buy, as I said, it was £1,400 on the road. I can safely say I've had my value and fun out of it. There's not many things you can spend that much money on that can bring you that much joy. Um, I've really, really loved it. The problem with these bikes, as I'm finding out now, sort of inquiring into getting a new bike and things like that, is selling it on or afterwards. Now, that's the issue. Because the Chinese bikes are so, br so cheap to buy brand new, very few people will buy them second hand. And you're looking at like 300 quid second hand. Um, so, you know, one of those things really, whether or not it will sell, I don't know. Um, but, you know, they're not designed to last an eternity. I haven't got much rust on it, everything looks okay, exhaust is still intact, a couple of the bolts and things around the rear brake, um, they've started to show a little bit of corrosion, but other than that, and I've ridden this in rain, shine, all sorts, um, you can see the watermarks are there. Basically what I do when I get home is grab one of the dog towels or something like that, just give it a quick going over, um, just dry it off the so fuel tank, stuff like that, just to be on the safe side. But as I said, I haven't really had a problem with it. Um, things like this little connector down here, that's showing no rust, I, it doesn't leak oil, the oil on the floor isn't from my bike, um, that's from my brother fixing Land Rovers in the garage. So there's starting to show a little bit of browning around here and a little bit around here but give it a good clean and it should all be okay it's very difficult though to clean behind this guard i haven't actually tried to remove it i probably ought to at some point um but yeah i mean i don't i ride in all sorts of weathers hasn't seemed to have corroded too badly some of these bikes do turn into rust machines um but i don't leave mine to sit in the rain all day it's sat in this garage um, I use my car for commuting, so this only comes out when I'm not really going anywhere from popping to the shops or whatever, even if it's raining, I'll still take this. Um, I've driven in rain, sorry, ridden in rain, hail, snow, slush, ice, all of that stuff. Um, yeah, and no, it has been an absolutely fantastic bike. I would recommend it if I was going to get another bike again. First bike, would I recommend a Zantes? Yes. If you're planning on buying a small bike for a year or so, I would thoroughly recommend these. Cheap to run, cheap to insure, you get that warranty. Parts are cheap, like I said, I dropped mine. Caused quite a bit of damage, thought I'd absolutely mullered the gearbox. Had done a little bit, bent the gear shifter, that all had to be replaced. Snapped an indicator off, that had to be replaced. Um, and yeah, all in all it came to including labour 100 quid and I think they charge about 50 quid an hour labour. So <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's absolute peanuts to uh, fix. If you do happen to drop it, yeah, it's not an expensive bike, you know. As I said, there was no point, I didn't see the point in changing the mirror. Um, one of the foot pegs is scratched, the rear foot peg on the other side is scratched. Um, it's just one of those things. This is Zontes Panther. I hope you've enjoyed my review. review. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to click like. Um, like button if you enjoyed it. And subscribe if you want to see some more footage. Um, but thank you very much for watching. And take care.